Я Джеди Смис Диес. Вы слушаете Блейдалоджи подкаст. jump into it like we do every week welcome to another episode of the bladeology podcast in the year 2020 uh we are on with a special guest this week and we are for the first time back to our original host lineup uh this is the vocal representation of jeremiah burbank from pvk vegas this is nick chuprin of ncc knives and Elijah Isham of Isham Blade Works making a return, hopefully. Nice. And who do we have on with us this week? Uh, we got Fernando Medina with Medina Custom Knives. Nice. Awesome. Okay, the Mighty Jalapeno. Aha. The Mighty Jalapeno. Very cool. Glad to, glad to have you on. Thanks for taking time to, to come chat with us. Oh, I'm honored, guys. Thank you. Absolutely. So, um, so tell us, what are you, what are you working on? Yeah. Uh, right now, let me see. I got a few things on the, on the bench, but the most probably spiciest one would be, uh, 3V core Nichols Damascus with, um, some Damascus bolsters and I believe it's Westinghouse scales. It's a liner lock. Um, oh, it's a one-off actually. It's, a uh, Looks like a what are the, those talon blades? I don't know what they are. Hawk bill, kind of one off thing. Oh, I did one for it's got, some, it's got some curvies going on. Yeah, I did one for the last Kentucky show, which was like I just it was like a whim thing. I just kind of threw it together, it came out really actually nice. Um, and the guy that bought it asked me if I'd make another one. I was like, sure. So I uh, lengthened out the blade because it was a little short in the other one and a little, just slightly bigger. So it should be more aesthetically pleasing, I guess you would say. Cool. Sounds sounds groovy. Good good materials with uh with some sharpness going on. I dig it. I dig it. Yep. Yep. Hawk bill. So not quite a uh, a talon like a karambit, just like in between. In between, yeah, exactly. Not, not. You can still use it. Yeah. Yep. It's pretty sweet. It's painted grind, but pretty sweet. Yeah, you know, um, I've been doing that horizontal grinding with the uh, with ten inch wheel for like uh, blades like that, and it's like super easy. Mm, I gotcha. Last time I did that, I was I was grinding a sword. The, it, it's actually pretty nice to grind that way until you stop. Like you have to be really careful not to slow down or, or to not get divots. Exactly. You get the divots. Uh, so you have to, because you only have that small, maybe half inch of contact. So you have to keep everything consistent, just like pressure even throughout. And if you mess up, you can definitely see the divots in there. Yeah. I know Mike Gavick grinds a lot of shit like that. Uh, yeah, actually, I, you know, I was supposed to, uh, reach out to him and ask him how he, he grinds, you know, those crazy swedges and stuff like that, but I just kind of figured it out, I guess. Yeah, it's pretty much, when I spoke to him last time, it's pretty much that, that's why they all look like their hand rub, because the grit's already going that way. Right. He grinds a lot of that stuff on the, on the horizontal. Right, exactly. Yeah, I, I haven't just kinda, tried that on my folders. It takes out a step, actually, because it's just like, you got those horizontal lines going through it nice nice um so so tell us let's let's jump back a little bit and let's um let's build a timeline here uh so how, how did we get here where, where did you uh where did you start this knife making journey oh man so i guess we'll have to go back 20 I want to say 2012, 2013, somewhere around there, where um, I was really, I'm, you know, I've always been into guns and stuff like that. And so you're, you're into guns, and then that's when social media started, like, really popping off, you know what I mean? And uh, 
So you, you find out things like EDC, what's an EDC? And you're like, okay. So you find out what that is. And, and then you start seeing people carrying these knives. And I'm like, well, okay, so I, I guess I need a knife. So back then, um, the ZT300 series was the hotness, right? And so I'm like, man, ZT300, what, what is that? So I, I, I Google it, and I remember seeing it. It was like 300 bucks. And I said to myself, $300 for a pocket knife? Are you freaking kidding me? And uh, I was like, why? And then you sit there, and you, you I ended up getting one. And I'm like, man, this thing's badass, you know. And uh, and then you just start going deeper and deeper into this this rabbit hole. And uh, so you start seeing these customs, and you know, in and I thought to myself, I'd never be able to afford a you know eight hundred thousand dollar custom back then. And then pimping knives was big thanks to Jeff th- uh, Tough Thumbs, you know, and you you watch him on, on his YouTube and you see him doing those, the ZT three hundreds and de assisting them and all this other stuff. And you just like, man, that's the coolest thing ever, you know? So, uh, I was like, oh, I, I wonder if I could, you know, make a scale because, you know, I, I was broke back then, dude. I, I didn't have any money. I was a new dad and, and, uh, money was, was super tight. So I just figured, I tried my hand at modding some knives, you know? And, uh, so I did that, tried doing that. And that's, um, when I met, you know, really started talking to Matt Christensen, you know? And, uh, he, he really like pushed me and helped me out because he was modding back then too. And, uh, let's see. So I did that for a few years <laughs> And Matt was doing that for a few years, and then he went to Blade Show, and then he came back and said he's going to make his 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 first custom. You know, what year was this? I think that was 2014. Was his first one? 21st or 2013? 2014. Because I remember when when uh, Matt started like getting real big. Yeah, uh, I think it was 2013 or 2014. I remember 2014. It had to have been 2014. He went to blade show and and uh i believe called, that's right because that was all of our first year because me you and matt kind of all started in the, within the same year yeah uh i believe that's right because i think mine math we we both uh met each other at blade show and was both our like first year and mine was also like 2014 yeah 2013 so, yep matt went down there and then he called me and he goes hey i got somebody on the phone and i'm like who and it was robert freaking carter that dude, <laughs> you know, oh, yeah. that was the first first real knife maker I ever like met, and I was like starstruck, like holy crap, you know, fucking I got to talk to Robert Carter. The so cat. I'm freaking out, you know. I'm at I'm at work and I'm freaking out, and and Robert's all like, oh, you know, I just put my my uh, pants on one leg at a time, just like you. That's one of the first things he's told me, and I'm just like, man, that just the coolest that guy ever. Be. Yeah, and uh, just I just thought it was the coolest thing ever, you know. And uh, so Matt came back that year, 2014, you know, and he he just busted out um, a few of his knives, and I just that was cool, you know. And he's like, "Oh yeah, you gotta come, you gotta come to Blade Show." So I go to Blade Show 2015, and it just kind of lit a fire under my ass, you know. I'm like, all right, I gotta do this, just try to make a knife and uh so i get back and it, by this time i was pretty well known for for pimping knives you know so i get back to uh to michigan and go to work and i just told my boss hey i'm quitting so i quit <laughs> I quit my job. Okay. I, I never even made a knife, and I just like, yep, I'm quitting my job. So that was it. You were like, I'm doing this full in. Yeah, just balls in, wow. just balls deep, dude. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just like the biggest, Shit. just fear ever, just because you, you didn't know what was gonna happen. And yeah, uh, 
I did the same nonsense. Except I was like, I, I quit, and like a week later, I moved. And at that time, I only made one folder, and I was half assed I was like, I'll, I'll figure it out. I'll just move and figure this out. Dude, I didn't even. I Matt was always there. Matt was always there. You know, he he helped me out. Like, you know, if I had a question, he he was always there. You know, so Matt has a big, huge part of why I started making knives. Um. Also, um. Holy crap. Um, what's his name? David Clark. You guys remember him? Mm-hmm. All right. So he he, he oh, wanted to collab with me. And oh, I remember we, those. Yeah. He is, so it was the expedition was the first one. And um, he's like, yeah, you can, you can do this. So I'm like, a folder, you know, that didn't ever make a custom anything. Except for scales. And then he's like, uh, I did a few frame lock conversions for Emerson's, you know, so I kind of had a little gist of of how to make a, you know, folder. But he goes, yeah, let's let's do a, a, a collab. So I'm like, OK, um, let's do it. But he did everything. He cut the 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 frames, shaped them, did the lock bar, the detents, you know, all that. So all I did was grind it and did the finish work. You know, I didn't know how to set a detent. I didn't know how long to cut the lock bar or, you know, even the geometry where to put a, a stop pin or, you know, stuff like that. I, I didn't know any of that because he, he did it. And, um, yeah, so I, I, I didn't know, you know, and, um, the way that he that he did the geometry was the stop pin was the thumb stud, you know. So I just oh, kind of okay. copied right. that, and I after we did those ten, I just kind of copied that geometry, and I started making the my fury um, folders, which were just big pieces of titanium and a piece of metal in the middle, just. I, they were kind of turdish looking, you know, but that's an honest description. I'll make the fury now. No, I, you know, I I don't make the fury now. I I uh, discontinued that a few years ago. Um, but yeah, get with the times, Nick. Yeah, I I look at them and you know, I at the time I thought they were they were sweet looking. I thought they were cool back at then. Now I see them now. I'm just like, man, I could. Could have done so much better, but at the time you thought you were doing your best, you know. Yeah, the that's I just basically found all that stuff out by myself, you know. It's like okay, the lock bar needs to be between two inch and two and a half for a certain, you know, blade length, the three inch, three and a half inch blade, just, you know. And that's kind of stuff that I didn't know because I didn't really apprentice under anybody, so all the shit that I've found out i had to find out the hard way um but matt was always there you know matt was there to you know guide me so to say so i didn't realize so so matt actually had a pretty integral part of your of your formation so to say matt was huge yeah so it seems like in the in the early days or the, or the early times. Um, so you were you were doing a fair amount of, of modifications then. So I mean, you you figured out uh, I did some frame lot. locks on Emerson's, which yeah. is pretty cool. Yeah. Um, so were you were you doing that like intensively, like per order, or you were just sort of you you were you were riding the wave on that and, and building, and and people would just buy it. Yeah, I was just riding the wave. Um, the frame locks on the Emerson's were really what. <laughs> Help me like figure things out because Emerson's are very just simple. Um, there, there's like really nothing hard about them. Um, it's think of Emerson like a Glock, you know, just super simple, but they work. You know what I mean? Very minimal parts and just slap it together. So I remember you making those and the the, the whole pimper knife like intro to guys like you and Matt getting that never ever, like that never made any sense to me especially yeah. when you were making those frame locks I'm like that just seems harder to it make was. a 
decide for a knife that's already made then just make it fresh and you assert your own geometries like i never i, I never went that route like a lot of guys did during that that generation of makers i think those three years a lot of people got into knife making through jeff uh tough knives through his pimping and a lot of guys like oh i want to pimp some stuff that are usually inevitably lends, leads to knife making and there's this whole generation of knife makers that were brought on with that sort of fashion i agree and as i was getting knife making during that time that never made any sense to me like i tried pimping out a knife and like just i was like wait like how do i sand these scales to the liners and the liners are coated and they're gonna be yeah it was, it was, it was very I, hard especially like lining up the detent vol like frame lock to an existing blade like i can't even do that now like if i gotta do a new lock side so well now with the cnc it's easier but before i got the cnc if i had to put a, make a new lock side for a blade because like something happened with the lock or vice versa i'll just make a new knife that's easier than replacing one of those parts see that's, that's, the, thing. Pimps. that's the thing with with modding is you learn how to fix those problems fast um knife making for me is just solving a problem every single day you know how do i all right this happened how do i fix this you know like how do i make it work it's uh and i modding knives really really helped me out with that it's like okay why why is this stop in here versus this one here and why does this one have this like lock rock um and this one doesn't you know it's all geometry that stuff that you learn doing that it makes it makes a lot of sense also i mean given um given the cost involved with with knife money i'm not saying like if you fuck it up it's cheap but it's cheaper than like messing up like a 3v core blade um yeah you know you can you can redo it and you can yeah it actually makes a lot of sense you can teach yourself a lot about mechanics right on a relatively cheap knife um and that 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 makes sense for a lot of people getting into making um they go through that path because it's 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 right in front of them they look at the knife they have and they go oh, how do i make this cooler how do i make this something i want that it isn't currently right it's just you know customized just like you know when you buy a glock everybody wants a different trigger different sights different stippled frame magwell all this other stuff it's just the same thing you know yeah so when you were when you were modding stuff, I mean, is that what was, what was the first piece of equipment you really like took a deep breath on? Like it was like a Grizzly or did you go to like the Harbor Harbor Freight and you were like, OK, I'm going to buy this grinder. Or did you sort of slowly, slowly build up an inventory of of machines? Oh, uh, so when I was uh, modding, I did um, <clears throat> everything Definitely on a one by one by 30. by 30. Yeah, one by 30 thing. Just crappy. That thing is just we've all had that thing for $40. You can't beat it to get going. <laughs> it made me so much money. Oh, yeah. uh, and it also broke so much of my dreams and hopes. That it did. That's hilarious. It did. to make a knife with one of those. One of, them, one of them that I had, it would shock me every single time I'd use it. Nice. I, I had the same thing with mine. I had to figure out like the ground wires were like <laughs> off. Oh, I didn't care. I just kept using it. That shocking at all. Forty bucks. Yep, exactly. I remember buying my first uh, real two by seventy two, which was a uh, Wilmot Tag one hundred one or Tag something. I remember when you bought that the Tag one hundred one. I was jealous of shit, dude. I man. Was, uh, like three grand and i was like uh because at that time i just bought a mill and i had a, like uh <laughs> i had a, a fear grinder which i think you had one of those too no i never had a fear somebody who uh, was, was it was somebody else that got a fear and i looked at it i was like man that's janky yeah it was like that was like 1200 bucks yeah and like i made a lot of modifications to it but like i bought that on the mill and then you bought the wilmot and i was looking at that thing i was like oh that's so cool <laughs> i yep and i remember uh naming her cinnamon just a oh, stripper wow. name. Right. <laughs> you, you, you like name all your stuff the stripper name. Yeah. <laughs> my, yeah that's custom my, right there. My mill is glitter. <laughs> oh, okay. So all right. I see you. I see you. All right. Pretty, uh, uh, they make me money. <laughs> right? Damn. <laughs> well, okay. He started like, the strutting around. Game, so he, you got you to yeah. run that thing strong. <laughs> Yep. Start yep. that like strutting around with like a cane and shit. 
Okay. Yeah, dude, uh-huh. I got that Wilmot, dude. I was like, holy crap. Like, how was I even doing anything with the one by 30? Because that thing would, the, the Wilmot would just hog anything out. Just, just tear through everything. And it was quieter than my one by 30. That little one, one by 30 sounded like a damn two stroke motorbike. Just yeah, well, once you put that first belt on there and you start grinding and like you realize that you actually can't stop the belt. Yeah. And that's when I'm like, oh, this is this is this is this is a game changer now. Huh? It's the bee's knees, you know. And I, I remember he was like, Yeah, do you want the one and a half horsepower or the two the two horsepower? I'm like, what's the price difference? And he told me, I'm like, man, whatever, just give me the two horse. Do you know? You want 32 ounce of the large. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, have you uh, or Nick ever used a uh, TW90 with the uh, Moen Platin? Dude, I yeah. want that. That'll be my next. Like, Nick, have you tried one? I, out? I've used it. I just, it's so hard to justify because the Platin costs more than the grinder does. Yeah. The Platin's like three grand. The grinder's like three grand. Yeah, that's the only experience I have with a grinder at all at John's shop, so I don't know. But yeah, John I mean, has. Like for me, I was like, oh, should I get it? But it's like, am I going to really spend $3,200 for a platter that just grinds the tip of my Tanto? It was nice yeah. all for that. It's a lot of money to justify. I, I don't think I, I – I can't justify that. That's just – Yeah, just, it's a lot of money. But, I mean, it is nice. It's like – No, it's I – nice and smooth. Travis is like works. a genius when it comes to designing stuff. Mm-hmm. There's another guy that's making the rotary plaid and like that with a support. He just came out with that. It. It's like under a grand. It's just the actual. Plaid. They're doing uh, wheels. I think they're going to do a ten inch wheel or an eight inch. Yeah, that's not so. That, that's wheels already have rubber on them. They don't really need that effect. But there's another guy who's making American rotary. I think. Okay. That's like eight, it's like under a grand, and it's pretty much the same thing. It doesn't have that whole cooling feature. I don't know how much that, how important that is, but for me, I'm not trying to hog off with the platen. I don't want it for hogging. I want it for clean finishes. So I don't really yeah, think exactly. I need the whole fan system. Yeah, which is pretty cool and all, but like again, justifying three grand for the platen or like two. Like right now, I have one Uber grinder, and then I have two of these cheap five hundred dollar grinders. Uh, that run off the same like dual motor that has two spindles on it and one VFD, and it's just dedicated. So one of those grinders does my my Tanto tips, and one does my swedges, and then the Uber hollow grinds. And like I'm like those grinders cost me five hundred dollars a piece, and they're great. Like I, if I was limited on space, yeah, I'd want one crazy grinder that did everything. Yeah, but I have space. I like dedicated tools, so I would rather buy cheaper ones and just dedicate them. But I keep yeah. looking at that attachment. I'm like three grinds a lot. Yeah, that's that's too much for me. All that stuff is built great, like all, all of Moen's yeah. jigs and all the hardcore stuff he's doing. It's built so nice, but like to a certain point, it's like it's a it's a grinding jig. I'm gonna destroy the shit out of it. Like it doesn't have to be finished that's cl- that cleanly. You know, agreed, I'm fine with just the water jet, like edge or something like that. Agreed. It's the same with the cost. Yeah, I, I don't I don't water jet. <clears throat> you just so, do I mean, uh, stock removal straight from a piece yeah. of steel and tie. I just cut everything out on my you know bandsaw and yeah, grind okay. away fuck yeah that's the way to do it oh, that's okay a, that's the only way uh i i really i don't i don't know if you guys if you can look at my earlier hellcats and you can look at a hellcat now they've changed drastically and i feel like the only way you can do that organically is doing it by hand um just little changes here and there you know if you if you have 500 blades already cut they're all going to be just the same you know what i mean you also <laughs> probably have a better connection to the piece too by doing it that way it is a pain in the ass too yeah you know like what's what you're dealing with right i mean Whereas nothing nick's got a you know press a button and then the knife is just like shot out of like a like a receiver, and then he just, See, he just puts it in the I, package. You know, I can never, weird. I can, I can never talk shit about a CNC maker because I can't go to his shop and make a knife. I press that button, like a maker doesn't come out. So many people say that like one's easier than the other. Like, no, they're both fucking like crazy hard. Uh, both. CNC knife making is harder. 
both they're both hard. I can't I can't like I can't yeah. go to your shop and then type in all the codes. I can't make a vice or a jig. I can't you know, I they're yeah, entirely I, yeah, different skill set being used yeah, exactly. the same shit, which is actually let exactly. me rephrase that. CNC knife making from a person who learned to CNC because of knife making is harder. If the guys that like CNC'd for years against knife making, it's another story. But like, I was a pretty much a knife maker like you for about four or five years. And I was like, you know what? If I'm really serious about full time, I'll go CNC and then I have to learn how to CNC because of knife making. So, like, right. all my methods. If you were a natural were, machinist, right. Yeah. But, yeah, but I'm, if I'm you, just if a you hack were machining thing, things you know. for like decades. Yeah, Conceived you're just you're just like playing around with that thing. Yeah, yeah, I'm just born out like, of uh, cooling. Make it make it work essentially. Yeah, I would talk to Nick and just you know I would ask him a question. He just goes off on a little tangent, and I'm like, what the fuck? How how is this guy even doing anything? Like how I I, I don't your learning curve is so small. You learn so fast, it's insane. Oh, show. I really, I have this other guy who works in my shop. He takes care of everything. Oh, your dad? Smoking <laughs> mirrors, man. <laughs> yes, my dad. It's a smoking mirrors. Got another Russian in there. That's what it is. Dude, they are Russian. I've known Nick for years, you know, and it's every single time I talk to him, it's just, oh, yeah, I'm going to do this and just this, this. And I'm like, what? You know, it boggles my mind. And next thing you know, he's doing it. I'm just like, okay. It, it boggles my mind, too, because I know, oh, yeah. You know, who he is. Like, we're probably right, exactly. the same person because you know <laughs> he's lazy as shit and like how he gets this shit oh done is a miracle. Elijah, you shouldn't be talking. You woke up an hour wow. ago. It's ten o'clock. <laughs> Nick, I've seen you like in bed all day long. <laughs> like, but still, so, you get shit done. That's my big time, Fernando. Got- when you when you met Nick, was he hacking the elections then, or is that that's a more recent thing for him? Um, you know, as a Russian. As you know, what I, I I didn't know he was Russian back then. So mm. I, it, it was cool, but all now, part of the cover. Yeah, exactly. Just smoking. It was cool. He found that was a Russian Jew, and he's like, "Oh, this guy is sketchy. I should stay clear. I have a family. Yeah, this guy's a sketchy dude." Really it's oh, just man. funny because every show we end up like hanging out. Like, what the fuck? How did how'd you get here? <laughs> no, this, this metal box. I say that every time <laughs> myself. <laughs> That's crazy. Um, all right, so. Let's see. So you you've always have you always been in the more in the more handmade category. Um, I know you said before that you might have had a mill, but I think you didn't mean a, a CNC mill. You meant like a manual mill. Yeah, I got a manual mill. OK, so when did you when when was the uh, when was the transfer? You So you got your grinder. Yeah, you upgraded to a serious grinder. Yep. And then you were like at a point you were like, OK, this drill press is just not doing it. I need <laughs> yeah, something I, else. I, I remember. Yeah. He, Cinnamon, exactly. And then cinnamon recruited glitter. Yes. Mm-hmm. Yep. Because I had a few of the the drill presses, and I'm like, yeah. Next year, I'm like, yeah. I kind of, I need a, I need a mill. You know, in telling my wife, and she's like, okay, well, how much is that? And I remember picking one out, and well, I also need this. You know, the collets, and then well, I need the end mills. You know. The, the little pieces too and she's like god damn it you know all these little pieces just to make one thing work and it's like ah oh. you know and then 25 dollars uh, amazon prime no problem oh my gosh this is uh oh and then you, know, the, you see how you need health insurance yeah and then you order you have to figure out the your next thing was oh i need a heat treat oven it's like oh god you know um, for the longest time, I was working off a little cheap uh, oven that I got from Amazon. Um, it's only like six inch deep, you know, which is perfect for folders. It was a rapid it's, kill. It's like 500 bucks. Yeah. Yeah, I bought one of those. Like, it almost killed me two days later, and I said no. <laughs> oh, really? Exploded. Yeah, the, out, the outside was the same temperature as the inside, <laughs> which is oh, not no right. Day. Dude, so you're glowing I, I, furnace in the corner. I turned that on and I walked away and I came back and the outside metal casing is red hot and I'm like, oh, that's not right. <laughs> Dude, mine mine is running like a champ. I still have the one I had from like four years ago. Uh, the reviews are bad on it. And I was like, you know what? It's 500 bucks. To Amazon, like, I can always return it. I'll just take my chances with it. First time I fired it up, the outside turned red hot. And I was like, nope, nope. Oh, that's that's definitely crazy. Not right. That's crazy. Mine's still kicking, dude. It's just 
<laughs> I think the little CPU, the little uh, the little timer went out, and the I they sent me a new one. It was like twenty five bucks. I slapped it in there. Still works great. I use it for like tempering now. Yeah, it's like it's like a ceramic block with, with metal foil around it and a computer yeah. CPU fan on the bottom of it. Yep, <laughs> I yep. Was like, that's, no, that's thing, the one. This thing's this. That's, now I got an even heat that's like uh, I think twenty one inch, huge. I'm like, why did I go this big? But I, one of my knife goals is to make a machete. Machete goals. Yeah, just I, I think the, the Mexican side. <laughs> Just wants that. Oh, well, just wants that fucking it, that slasher. Because the ones that I made were, were were based off of Jewish slaughter knives that turn into a machete. Uh, do you guys remember Jason Dietz? Alex Dietz or Jason? Or Alex, 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 Jason. Dietz. Oh, yeah, Alex. I remember Alex Dietz. Alex oh, Dietz. Yeah. yeah. So he sent me. $2. He oh damn. He owes me a lot. <laughs> Shit. Anyways, hey, you don't owe me nothing, but uh, he sent me a uh, Jake Hoback um, machete that that Jake had, had made, and it was thick. It was a uh, made out of CPM one fifty four, or yeah, CPM one fifty four, or no, one fifty four CM because it was before CPM, and it was just big quarter inch stock, you know, just hog, and uh, he's he sent it to me. He's like, yeah, try it out. So I, I get it, and I'm like, man, this thing's a beast. And I live on the farm, so I I go out in the in the woods, and I'm just chopping things down, just, just things that don't even need to be chopped. I'm just chopping away. <laughs> and this was before my knife making thing, you know. And uh, I told myself, yep, I got to make one of these. So I have to make one of those, you know, one day soon. Freaking machete, damn thing was huge. I mean, get it. A- Get it done. Why the heck not? So that's that's a good that's a good segue. So right now you're you're primarily making folders. Yeah. Right. Yep. Um. Where do you, where do you stand on the lineage of of mechanisms and styles? Fixed blades. What else? A- anything that you're craving to make that you haven't made yet? Um, Other than the machete, obviously. I you know I, I'm gonna do a few kitchen knives um, just to see if I could do it because I heard it's a pain in the dick. To yeah, they're uh, fun to grind. Just, you got to start with a thin stock and you know grind away, and they heat up really fast. So I don't know. I want to do that. Um, I got to make my machete here. I got to. That's one of the things I got to do. Um, I kind of want to make a, uh, a. I'm really into like the Japanese traditions and stuff like that. Um, so I want to make a Japanese style fixed blade, you know, 18 inch, maybe, I don't know what the norm is. I'd have to look it up. You know, those ones where they commit their suicide with, I forget what they're called. Oh, Harry carry knife. Yes. I want to make one of those. Well, it's like a sh- almost a short sword. Maybe it's like a tanto, like in the... <laughs> No, so essentially, inch, there, there's a katana, variety. there's a wakatachi, and then there's one more that's shorter, and that's there's the one. The shortest one. The, yeah, I, I that's made a the wakatachi. tanto. <laughs> Twice. I, I, I made I, a wakatachi. Yeah, I kind of want to make one of those. Um, a wakatachi. Yeah, that would be pretty sick, I, especially it, with your grind on there. Yeah, you know. Um, <laughs> You have Everybody says that. Uh, Everybody wedge. says my grind. Like, yeah, you have an I, interest wedge. You can tell it's yours. It's it's weird. I I see. It. That was one of the things I was always nervous about first making knives is trying to find a signature. Mm-hmm. That's definitely you know? your signature. And I never knew. I was like, what what is going to be my signature? And I remember grinding. Grinding was so hard for me. And I talked to some like Robert Carter. He's like, oh, just just do it. I'm like, what do you mean? Just do it. You can't just do it, you know. Bro, just Nike that shit. Get yeah, in there. That's what that's that's if Rob. If you know Robert, he's just like, just just do it. It's not hard. Well, just, I didn't. Yeah, I didn't get that myself until it's like, oh shit, it's called a plunge for a reason. Kind of got to just take the plunge. Just get in there and go for it. Yeah, the the plunge is hard though, man. The plunge is oh, is, yeah. is getting that correctly and then matching them up, and it's it's hard. Got to build up that muscle memory. Yeah, exactly. And and just go for it. 
after a while yeah, you get it and then mm-hmm. um I was always worried what 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 could be my signature what's my signature and I never knew that it would be my grind never in a million years would I thought it would be how I grind yeah. you have the utmost respect for anybody who can freehand hollow grind people and say that's that all- flat or hollows whatever but like to me it seems like hollow would be harder yeah um for me now because i just do hollow flag grinding is hard um just I imagine I'm, hollow is easier after a point but getting to that point is a little difficult getting to the point where you know the the wheel actually holds that the blade in um is hard it's a lot, yeah um but flag grinding to me is weird and then just i so i hollow grind everything um not that i I find one better than the other. Um, just it's my preference, I guess. I know, or, uh, with a jig. Yeah. I, so I jig, um, I do jig the wedges just because if I Why grind not, the right? blade, huh? Why not? Yeah. Yeah. I just, to, just the wedge for me is if, cause it's so small. I just don't want to f- mess up the, the, um, the blade, whereas the main bevel, it's more forgiving, you know. Whereas yeah, you're grinding I, I something small. I still never really learned how to do a, a good freehand swedge. I've always used the jig. Well, I've never really used the jig for the swedges. I just tilt my work rest to 60, 60 or 70 degrees. But uh, oh, okay. the little bevels like that, they're just hard as shit. Yes, I agree. Like, you the same plane every time. Yeah. Yep. It, it's crazy. Um, never would have thought you, you'd think that you're removing small amount it'd be easier to do but no it's way harder <laughs> yeah you can't you can't ever refine it it's not it's not like a science really i mean it is when you go into cnc and shit but you're just kind of like carving away at a piece of metal yeah you know some that. some people would be like oh can you can you grind it the way you ground this blade and i'd be like oh, i'll try but i can't replicate it because uh a lot of times i just kind of go into it and I'd see where it leads me, you know, where I end up kind of thing. I stopped really grinding. I've ground over a thousand blades. And it's every time I got to go grind a blade, I'm like, oh, God damn it. Yeah, me too. So every time I was like, uh, and like I'll, I'll go find the other things around the shop to do to keep like, to like procrastinate and postpone it every time. And all of a sudden it's like, oh, I got to grind 10 in one sitting. God damn it. I oh, can't like, do that. Do CNC. Yeah. Yeah. I got to go do that. I can't grind more than if I have to do more than three blades. I I, I won't do it. Um, I just start getting. And uh, I, I don't know how do you, how do you say. Um, I don't know if the, after the after the third one, I'm just like I'm spent. I'm done. Joke I can't. Yeah, I know. I mean, that's how I used to be, and I was like, you know, what? Cause then I started working in batches of twelve, ten to, to twelve. So now it's like I'll just sit there and grind all day, and like in, for the week. Like I'll dedicate this day. Okay, and this, this like Thursday is gonna suck. It's gonna be morning tonight. Just grind everything, dirty as shit. Like just get it done. Yeah, it's well, it's like a time. that's the idea of like a batch grind. Like you just set them all aside, and then you, you just do it. Yeah, pretty <laughs> much. I set up all the grinders, and I just go to fucking town, and I go home, and I hate myself for about two days because my hands cramp up and the shoulders cramp up. It, see, it's not that. It's just I I. After three blades, I feel like uh, I I, be, I become stupid as shit and I forget how to grind and I start doing stupid mistakes and then that's how I ruin them. Oh, see, I'm the other way around. After three, so I'm grinding ten blades, like blade four to ten are the best because after I get into a rhythm, it's it's the f- first three that's like, oh, God, I hate this. And after that, it's like, okay, look, I'm in it. Let, let's get these done. It's just the I'm, start that I hate. I'm opposite, man. I The first one is great. Second one, just as good third one okay you know done that's it you know i i won't do again until i mean that's like that spark of originality like you you stumble upon something and it's like it works so well and you're pumped and then you dive into something else and you're like oh maybe i can get like a little bit of that greatness out of the second one i mean that's that that applies to a lot of creative um ideals in general which is like you just happen upon something and they're like damn i wish i could just do that again and it's not always you just can't always do it like we've heard other makers say that where it's like can you just grind exactly like that And it's like bro 
that was like a magical grind. Like Nick tells that story all the time about the about the Voorhees he has. And Les is like, I don't know that I can actually do that again. That was like a that was a one time magic thing. Like you exactly. should be happy that exists. It, yeah. And, and and I try to, um, you know, I'll try it and then it won't be the exact same. It won't even be to me. It won't even be close. You know, uh, I'm just. Oh, do you want an angled angled grind? Okay, sure. I it won't be the same height. It won't be you know. Can't I won't have the same plunge that it, that one had. Maybe the tip will be slightly different. It, it, everything plays in. It, even each piece of steel that you play with has a mind of its own. See, you I, know. See, see for the, for me these days, I've the problem is like I've made the MK one so many times now. I'm tired of it. I want to do something else, but. My, mine are usually always the same at this point. They're like, oh, can I, can you, they'll show me a picture of another baker's knife. I'm like, can you do this on that? I'm like, you could go buy that knife. Like I grind it like this. Like I, I, I mathematically know, like I do the geometry and I figure out mathematically all my grind heights and everything. See, and that's, that's how a, I, I, they're always usually the same because I've, I've done the math <laughs> for them and before that, I even made the design. That's the, that's the thing that, you know, we can go back to where I, you know, I'd call you up and, I talked to you and you just like, yeah, I mathematically did this, this and this. And I feel like a dumbass because I'm over here just doing it free ball in it, you know, each time. And you're like, Oh yeah. If you got this with the thickness of a blade, you can grind this high. And I'm like, what? And I just go in there. Well, no, <laughs> I don't back know. In the day, it used to be a website that, that did the math for you. And it was, I don't know who built the site. It was literally hollow grind calculator.com. Yeah, it was and a there was an app too. Well, that was for flat grinding. The app still exists, but the hollow grind no. calculator. Oh, there no, is. No, there was a yeah, there was a hollow grind calculator. I need to find it because now I, I run the I have the formula and I do the math myself. But it used to you remember like what what size wheel are you using? How thick is your stock? What do you want yeah. your edge thickness to be? Yeah, and it'll tell you how high the grind is. Yeah, and for me, like I'll, I'll I, the website's not there anymore, so I I just kind of figure out the formula myself. And now I'll do the math and I'll visually be able to do it in CAD and see what it looks like. And I'm like, cool, this design will have this kind of grind. And I'll figure out what my grinder and my jigs to do all the nonsense. And, and I'll make dedicated setups for it. So that's why it's like the grind is usually, this. it's 90% the same or so. If it's not, it's usually because I messed up and I'll reorientate it and, and grind it a little higher or do something a little different to it. See, exactly. Like I just like, what? All all that nonsense you just said, I'm like mm. all all that garbage you just spat it out. I have no idea where I am. <laughs> I mean, to be fair though, I think anybody would say, even Nick. I mean, like the essential concept behind having a machine like that is so you can repeat things easily and do them over and over again. Yep. Yep. It's, you, I, don't I mean, a lot a lot of people do use it for other things, but it's not it's not for doing one offs. It's for doing repetitive exactly. stuff. Yeah, yeah, so now I don't actually I don't do production scale stuff. So like even me, I have like six handle patterns for that one model at minimum at minimum six, and then even then I alternate them every couple times. And I, there are guys like I, I'd love to, I'd love I fucking love to do that. Like for example, uh, Koenig, knives are great, but like he has the set patterns and he just makes a bunch for that pattern. And so he not to like I'd love to do that, which I'm going to be doing stuff like that now, like feel more feel great stuff where like this design will have this handle pattern i'm gonna make a hundred of them with that handle pattern and then it's great like i, I did the work uh, and then i could run those and then i have to sit down and do cad work again but like the full customs I'll, I'll sit there spend a few hours coming up with one handle pattern i might do it 10 times i'm like okay that one's done go to the next one and it's like it would have been easier just for 10 of them just to do it on a manual mill i don't have a manual mill anymore so i have to program all of it koenig makes some some great stuff bill bill's a bill's a good dude yeah, those ones are killer. Yep. <clears throat> yeah, so, so, Fernando, so when did you like really realize? Like, I, obviously, you were full time for some time, but at, at what point were you like, okay, like this, this, this is the shit. This is going to be my career for life. Like for me, for example, it was my first Blade show. Like when I came home after Blade show, I was like, okay, like this is starting to come together. Like at what point to you were like, okay, like I've done this full time for a little bit, and after a certain point, you're like, okay, like this is gonna be it. Like this is uh-huh. real. So this is real. Because obviously, when you go full time, that first year is still like, uh, hopefully, like first, it's, I'm first maintaining. Year sucked. First year sucked. Second year sucked. Third year, 
So I started twenty seventeen or or sixteen. Twenty seventeen. Hmm. Was probably the time. That's when you know I started. I was the Hellcat was was the Hellcat is my staple. It's my bread and butter. You know, I I thought about discontinuing it, but then I'm like, it's too. It's it's. It's just it's a for me it's a timeless design. It's kind of future. It's not it's modern, but I feel like it's kind of it's classic too. Um, it just has great lines. Uh, I feel so. I just I'm gonna make it until I guess I'm tired of it. Um, yeah, I know what you mean. Every time I speak to Jeremiah every six months, like I'm retiring the MK1. This is the last three on my bench. Oh, you told later. me that like three years in a row. Yeah, two weeks later, I have like parts for seventy five more on my bench. <laughs> it's yep. like, fuck. yep, like that water jet fiasco you had. Um, oh yeah, I got like one hundred twenty sets of parts for half. Of it. That's that was the first time I was like, I'm done, and then oh, I have all these parts. Like, oh, I guess I have to make it again. Yeah, yeah. So it's it, like hot. It haunts you, and just keep doing it. Yeah, you know, and and. <laughs> Um, so yeah, after like 2017, you know, you start making different, um, models and stuff like that. And, um, for me, uh, designing knives is, is pretty hard. Um, you, 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 you know, you don't want to be influenced by anybody else. Um, so trying to make something original is freaking amazingly hard. You know, uh, that's where Elijah comes in with his, you know, crazy designs and stuff like that, uh, which I feel like are very original. Um, well, thank you. But it, it, for me, creating a a knife is it's hard. So if I'm if I pull out one or two new models, you know, every few years, I'm I feel like I'm doing good. You know, um, so. Yeah, the the models I have now I feel like are pretty pretty good. Um everybody keeps telling me I should make like a thinner style knife and for the life of me I I, I can't I can't do it. I was going to say you should you should like try your hand at it like a thinner kind of like gentleman I've, style. I've tried and every single time I I I I make it something messes up and I just throw it away. I'm like, "Nah, fuck it. Can't do it." Yeah, I know. I mean, that's what I. That's the recent design that I made. Well, it's not recent. The recent one that I pulled out I was like, "This is going to be the next one." It's like super slim, very minimalistic. It's like this is as much knife as it, as you need. Yeah, yeah. I but, do want to make a gentlemanly one. It's just, just for me. It's just I. I for, it's not your style. You can't you're, do you're, it. You're, you do the wide stuff, and that's people that like them buy your knife for that reason. I tell yeah. people all the time. Oh, they want me to do this. I'm like, eh, it's not my style. I, there's probably a better maker out there for you. Yeah. And I, it, I have lots of people ask me, can you make a thinner one? It's just, it's not like, in my physical ability to do it. I don't know why, you know, it's, it's easy. Just don't use as much material, you know, <laughs> but it just, to me, I look at it. I'm like, this looks like complete dog shit. So I won't do it. For example, that wonderful email that I know you've had because I get it every I get it at least once a month. Hey, man, I love your knives. They're beautiful. I'd love to get one. Can it just be a half inch longer, quarter inch thinner, thinner blade stock and like remove the tanto and this? I'm like, so you want a different knife? Gotcha. I'm like, yeah. OK, <laughs> yeah, hey, you I want a knife by like, some other maker? Yep. My favorite ones are the ones where where they're the sympathy party ones. Would really like to get one of your knives, but you know, would it be all right if you donated one? I'm like, what? Uh, I got a recurring email every six months. Uh, yeah, saying, we were like, just talking about this. I got one too. Like, yeah, the same it's guy. Like, oh, uh, you, you get this guy. He's definitely a scammer. We, we talk about it in a lot of life. <laughs> He's like, hey, man, I've been sober for a year and a half now, and I really need uh, a memento to yeah. remind me of my right. Yeah, okay, we all get yep. that guy, different aliases. Yep, I've got I that one actually, yeah, three weeks ago. Like, I don't know if it's like a troll or if it's like an actual person. No, nah, oh, we yeah. all talk about like making communities. The guy hits us up every few months with different names, and it's always the same story where it's like, I've been sober. I really love to get something of your work, and like, I really appreciate it. If you could donate one, it'll be on me forever. And it'll be my yep. moment, my, my moment, like my, my token exactly term. My, my yep. That's, that's, that's what 
want something that bad, you would think that you could like, you know, appreciate the person who made it and like give them monies. Mm-hmm. Doesn't make any sense. No, I, I, I don't. I don't respond, respond to that guy once in a while. I'll, I'll, I'll troll him, but Rob loves to troll that guy. Oh yeah, I can't imagine. <laughs> he probably like yeah. goes back and forth of them shit. Robert Carter. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that guy is like freaking just crazy. <laughs> Rob, he's another one that just like when I met him at Blade Show 2015, he was just a nut, you know, and. He told me something that will always and forever stick with me. He told me, I'll stomp a mud hole in your ass and walk it dry. And he was, you know, mud hole in your ass and walk you dry. Yeah, this, I'll stomp a mud hole in your ass and walk it dry. And I said, What? It, <laughs> I had First no of idea. all, I have no idea what you're talking I about. Had, Second of all, what the hell? And he's like, he's like, oh yeah, it's just, to ask you to leave like... immediately. <laughs> yeah, that's why I'm used to it. I've, I've, I've lived with him for a months at a time, and I've been around his family. I'm like, oh, you guys, you guys all talking riddles. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, you guys all talking like Southeast Texas riddles. Okay, yeah, started figuring was... them out after a roll out. Yeah, that was when he was making those uh, nocturnal folders for that nocturnal. I think it was. It's it's escaping my mind right now. But yeah, he was making those. And then he also told me it's tighter than a gnat's ass stretched over a Coke bottle. Holy Christ. That's great. Yeah, it's like... I've never heard anything from him. He doesn't (laughs) do it as much as he is. I first met Rob, he used to say some weird nonsense, though. He doesn't say it as much these days. But back then, he used to say something nonsense and then when I met his grandpa and his father I was like oh this makes so much more sense <laughs> like you saw like you saw the thoughts like coming to life and you're like oh okay I get yeah, it I, I see where this is born side, I was on the other side of the veil I was like oh I see where all this comes from now this makes so much more sense okay okay so now I have a conversation with Mel Pardue and you're like oh okay I got I got like oh, okay. every third word you said and I'll just put it together <laughs> yeah you try to stick it together you're like what you kind of got the gist of it. Smile and nod. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, that's all you can do, you know? It's like, what? <laughs> so, Fernando, you, um, we, we hung out most recently at the, um, at the Kentucky show. How, how did you get wrapped up, uh, with those guys? Uh, dude, um, Chris Flanagan, he's just, he's just, uh, <sighs> How can I how how can I describe him to me? Uh, he for me, he is ah, he's like one of the best men I've ever met. Uh, yeah, he is he is very just give you the shirt off his back kind of guy. Uh, he's just he's. Uh, for lack of a better word, just amazing, man. Seriously, um, he's just great. Um, so he 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 contacted me and said, "Do you want to do our show?" And I and uh, I was like, "What show?" I didn't know you had a show, and I heard about the Kentucky get together, you know, that they used to do back in the day. I didn't know it was a legit show. Him and Scott Cottingham put together. Um. Uh. So, Scott. Also, he's just he's amazing too. He's those guys just down south are just awesome. But uh, they contacted me asking me if I wanted to do the show, and I was like, sure. You know, I I, I didn't have any idea, but there's a few other makers that I talked to. They were like, yeah, super chilled and easy going. So I'm like, okay, I'll do it. And it's my favorite show, like hands down. I have the most fun there. They, they take care of the, the, the makers. Um, it's what? Four hours. Right. About. Yeah. It's about yeah. four hours. It's, like six hours. it's a four hour show. And just, you have a ball and it's a party up until that day. And then, Next day, everybody just parties again. It's just a, 
if every show could be like that, it'd be perfect. I feel like be a special place. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, cause it's so personal. You can, you know, really talk to people. It's almost as if like someone else needs to step up and create one of those shows to end all the rest. Yep. Yep. <laughs> I love that show, man. I, I actually, my wife looks forward to it and the kids look forward to it. It's just, it, it's a good show. I can't do Blade Show, man. I think my last Blade Show was 2017. Uh, I, 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 this, this was the first year. Oh, well, last year was the first year where I really truly exhibited at my own. Like, Elijah was with me there, but it was really like that. that I got that booth through Chris. Uh, but it was the first time where I was like, I have my, like a full lineup. I had 18 folders with me and it was fun, but I was like, it was, it was a lot. <laughs> Dude, a every show. Show is so stressful, man. It's just, yeah. Well, last year we, we did together, we did 11 shows. That's too much, man. That's yeah, crazy. Never, never, never again. 14, maybe. Or maybe it wasn't. Yeah, I don't know. It was, it was, it was a blast. I had a great time. It, it was fun, but like, they're not knife makers. They don't get it. <laughs> Yeah, Jeremiah dude. just rolls in and buys stuff. Elijah's just like, I'm just going to show up. And I'm like, I didn't sleep for fucking 20, 20 days. And then I've been on, I haven't slept in two days. And now I popped up at the show and I'm going to sell lives. Like, bro, what do I tell you every time I see you at the shows? Oh, my like, oh, God. Nick, how are you? Oh, I haven't slept in three days. What's up? Pass yep. that bourbon. Exactly. Every, <laughs> time, every time I talk to Nick, I'm like, he's like, oh, yeah, I haven't slept for three days. I'm like, what? He's like, yeah, I haven't slept for three days. I'm like, how are you standing, bro? Like, what the hell? And he's just drinking his bourbon. I'm like, God With damn. the bourbon in one hand and the coffee in the other. And I'm like, oh, I made like 16 knives within the week to get here. But it all yeah. works out. It'll be yeah, great. He, I'll sleep tomorrow. And he, that's what he, he says that every single time. Just like, oh, yeah, I'll sleep tomorrow. Like, what? No, bro, you need to sleep now. Like, go home. <laughs> I'm already here. It's cool. <laughs> oh, man. And, and then you, you check out Nick's knives and they're all perfect. And you're like, how this guy didn't sleep for freaking 20 days. How did you even do this? All you illusion. Know? It's all CNC, yeah. my guy. <laughs> it's all illusion. Yeah, shows are so stressful. I mean, you 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 tell yourself, all right, you're going to start here and you should be golden by then. No, never happens, dude. It's – you. As much as you try to plan for a show, it never works out the way you that you you plan it. I don't know why it just it just happens. I, uh, that sounds right. <laughs> so for now, the key is just don't sleep. That was right. True. Don't sleep. It all works out. Waste wasted so much time sleeping. You waste <laughs> so much time those eight hours. You don't need those. <laughs> you don't need that. I'm telling you, you don't need that. No, I think the first the first year, which I think was 2019, Kentucky, Elijah and I met Nick at his shop. No, no, no. Elijah for some reason you flew in. in 2018. So last year. Oh yeah, so you're, you're right. 2018. So Elijah, Elijah flew into New York. I drove down. We met Nick at his shop. And basically, there was like two days of total nonsense where Nick never slept. And then the morning that I drove us to Kentucky, I woke up. Elijah was still asleep and I couldn't find Nick. And he was in the grinding room inspecting his grinds. I'm like, bro, we have to leave in like oh, yeah. four hours in order to get to Kentucky. And he's like, I'm on it. I'm on it. Just like, just give me five more yeah. minutes. I'm like, oh, oh my God, you like haven't slept guys. at all. Because <laughs> I have a bedroom at the shop. So Elijah was sleeping on, in the bedroom and then Jeremiah was sleeping on the couch in the lunch area. And then I was just the I was, I was running the CNC and the tub, yeah, just a table and couches. Uh, and I'm running mm-hmm. the CNC trying to finish up my, uh, some pocket clips for those knives. I'm running the tumbler, tumbler handles, and grinding blades. Yeah, I like and, vaguely woke up maybe and was like peeked around the corner and like Nick is just like furiously like running back and forth fi- finishing things. So Jeremiah, when when you told him you have to leave, did he give you that look where he's like? Just like glazed over. <laughs> yeah, yeah, totally. Completely glazed over. I was like, bro, we have like four hours. I just woke up. You obviously haven't slept. I was like, I don't know what I can do. Probably nothing. But like, we have to meet this deadline of leaving. Because like, so we were in New York and I, was, I think it was Friday or maybe Thursday. Yeah, it, and I was, was like, in order to be there. We ended up sleeping at John's that night. 
Oh, that's oh, right. Yeah. I was like, okay, that's right. We had planned to go to John Gray's. So I was like, yo, like we got to do this. And Nick is like, dude, like two more hours. No, I he, got he, this. He I'm like, he, oh he my God. So what happened was we actually left Wednesday. I didn't sleep. We drove up an hour and a half to John Gray shop. And I didn't sleep that whole day too, because oh, me and yeah, John were making funny. a collab. You were actually at a collab. So Nick, oh, yeah. oh my God. I can share a fucking air mattress at John's. Because I was like, I slept on the couch. Like, John's like, here's an air mattress for you. I'm like, the pump would be nice. It's like, <laughs> no pump. Either. I totally forgot that. And then Nick, Nick and John Gray left at like 4 a.m. to go to John's shop. Yeah, and then to continue and Jared, working. Oh my god. Yeah, we went over and we were like, what's well, good? Nick, like I'm about, to, I can't take it anymore. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Nick was freaking out with like a headlamp on. There was like no electricity, and like him and John were just, oh my god, that was like in the minute. shop, right? Because you're a CD. <laughs> yeah, oh, yeah. I, I don't oh think freaking out because I wasn't sleeping. I was still fine. I was freaking out because I just I, I hate working in a John shop because it's like I don't know where anything is, and they like shits all over the place. And then he also has a big ass shop, and at that time something happened with the ballast in his lights, so we had to work with headlamps because there, there was, was no only power. one light for the giant shop. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah, there was power, but there was just no lighting. That was it. <laughs> Nick's oh, greatest God. line. I wasn't freaking out because I wasn't sleeping. <laughs> no, I, I get in the zone. After after I don't sleep after 24 hours, I'm in the zone because if I stop working, that's when I go to fall asleep. So I have to just not stop. So I get. I end up like putting having a double output because at that point there's no daydreaming. There's no get on Instagram. If I sit down to get on Instagram after 24 hours, I, I nod off. So the goal yeah, is after right to sleep. hour 24 and 48, you just 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 just, just run it. No, that's just not normal. It. Nick, that's it's not totally normal. normal. We're not, not normal at all. I've always done well, that. Totally that's normal. true. <laughs> Look, Fernando, how many years have you know me? I've always been normal. The only time I, my body has left humanity <laughs> is uh, uh, was the last U.S. Zen show on Friday. Oh, geez. That, I, w- I want to stab someone at the ne- in the neck. That show. Because what happened was I didn't sleep. I got everything done. But then I flew into Vegas four days early. So I partied in Vegas for four days before the show even started. Death sentence. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That oh, was yeah. Oh, in my head. Oh, oh, yeah. oh, yeah. All right. Dead. Rob never made it to the show because of the hurricane. So he gave me his table. I wasn't supposed to exhibit. And I was like, well, I have knives with me. I guess I'll exhibit. And I'm like, I didn't plan for any of this. It's supposed to be my vacation. Completely by the books. Yeah, it was total, <laughs> total culture. I'm telling you, everybody just knife shows wrong. We do it right. This is how it should be done. <laughs> uh, write, write that down. <laughs> yeah. Write that down. Game plan. Write that That's- down. <laughs> My new bumper sticker, you knife show wrong, we knife show right. That's <laughs> no sleep and then just fucking burn it to the ground and then show up and then explosion, sell knives, pass out for four hours, repeat, and yeah. that's it. So the first 48 hours after that, you're golden, right, Nick? Yeah. <laughs> well, every year I tell myself I'm going to take a one-day break before Blade Show. Because like, Blade Show's only when you really need the energy. No. Yeah, it, it, it's never happened. It's no. usually I'll work right up. Uh, I, I'll work right up to the show. And then I'll – because I always drive to Blade Show. So it's no sleep and then drive 14 yeah. hours to Blade Show. Yeah. And then I'll, I'll catch up on – I'll get like a nap during the show, during the drive. Uh, but it's always like I'll take that one day prior off. But then it's, I, it's like the day will come. It's like, oh, I made enough knives. But I'm like, oh, there's three more knives on that bench that are like in finishing stages. I could either leave those or like, you know, if I just finish and not sleep for 20 hours before I fly out, drive out, like I've got three more knives on that, that. That's a decent paycheck. Oh, yeah, let's, let's do it. I'm like, oh, shit. Every show that Nick goes to, he goes, he told me how many he brought. And then he'll go, yeah, I probably won't sell any of them. And then at the end of the show, I'm like, so how'd you do? He's like, oh, I sold out. <laughs> It's surprising how, yeah, no, I, I've seen that. Nick's like, I don't know, this is gonna be a shitty show for me. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, he says that two days later, show. like, bro. it's gone. Like, bro, you sold out. Like, it's because, it. like, in recent years, I've been bringing a lot, and whenever you bring over 10, it's like, this is a lot of knives. So, that's like, always like, uh, I feel like I don't think it will sell out. I don't think it will sell anything. Yeah, 
That's why you guys will never get it. Like, like, you guys saw, you guys have only seen it once because you guys stayed with me the two days before Kentucky. So you guys have saw it from now. Like that's me every show. And like, like I said, we did 11 shows last year. So that was me every three to four weeks. I would just not sleep for a couple days before. I'm like, I got to get all this done because this is my paycheck for the last two. Cause usually you don't get paid for like two, three weeks before a show. Yeah. Cause you're building exactly. inventory. Right. So it's like, you don't sell out. That's why every show you hear me, it's like, I need my knives. This is a month worth of income. I don't think I'm a sell. I'm a sell shit. And it's like, that's what I'm and then, like. I haven't slept. So it's like, was not sleeping again. It's done worth it. Cause like, this is my eight months income. And then thankfully like I'll sell stuff, but to maker, it's a different story there. Yeah. But the thing with, with, with me or every maker, I feel like every year you become slower at building a knife, not because you're not working hard. It's because you're, fit and finish and just your let's say I, OCD I, I guess just your perfectionism I guess is that a word Um, it just goes up so every single year like I used to be able to make a knife a folder in like a day and a half right now for like plain titanium pocket clip satin blade right day and a half now that same knife will take me three days because you're not happy with this you're not happy with that this doesn't look good so you take those ex- that extra time to to make sure that's perfect you know so every show that i do it's like harder to do because you know it just it takes longer to make a knife and it's like frustrating because you were you able more to- over here no i don't i i i'm kind of i don't know if it, the market's weird it's just you know you got to learn what's hot you know like a couple years ago it was all time mascus remember that everybody wanted time mascus and yeah, then i never followed the market though. every time i did that i was like i don't want to follow the market don't follow the market don't figure out what's hot create the market yeah, well, I mean, but he, that's what sells. That's what people want. That's what they order. It's like I want time masks. So it's like back then you'd like get orders. It's like I want time masks. I want time masks. I want time masks. It's like okay. And then the following year, so I want OD Green Micarta. You know, um, but I like, like, well, like for example, like, how many how many time masks frame locks do you think I've made in my ten year career? I don't know. I've never made one. Well, you're slacking. Yeah, he's I, never. I, I, get, I, I get an email at least once or twice a month. Hey, man, like, can I get like a full time Ascus frame? The MK1. I'm like, uh, no. Well, yeah, I maybe I'll make do. one eventually. I'll put you down on the list. I think is what Nick is doing with like just holding it off and be like, yeah, I'll make one maybe. Uh, yeah. Maybe. No, I put him on a special list for him. I'm like, if I do make it, because every time I do make something like that, I always lose money on it. And like at the end of the day, like I love what I do. We love what we do, yeah. but it's a business. Yeah. Also, like, I don't follow the trends. Yeah. It keeps yeah. people thirsty for the time maskus. See, yeah. It, it takes me longer to make a knife, right? But I never raise my prices up from. Well, the first two years were were my cheap prices because I'm a new maker, you know? So then after that, you go up to what a basic knife is, what? 750, 800. It's a basic frame lock, right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, in that, in that neighborhood. Yeah. In that neighborhood. Well, we started right? 550. I yeah. When that. I first started, it was 550. Yeah, 550 was the price for everybody back then. Right. So just like gas and a gallon of milk, everything goes up. The cost of living goes up. So Naturally, you have to go up in price just to compensate for that. So when I switched over to that area, I was making the knife in a you know day and a half. I'm still making that same knife, but it's taking me three to four days now, but the same price. And I, I've thought about raising it, but then I'm like, that just... Jeremy Marsh is, I think his basic frame lock is... 800 bucks cool but like when do you see something that's the thing I, people make that argument but then like i never see him make a basic frame lock right but marsh i've seen plenty of them i mean if you ask him that's what you're gonna pay i saw one somebody showed me 
walked up at a show. I was like, yo, check it out. I just scored it. And I'm like, that's cool. And it was completely plain. It was like the plainest Marsh I've ever seen in my life. Yeah. And Marsh, Marsh to me is just, he's like. He's my favorite, Marsh, man. Marsh is 40 something minutes away from me. Um, no shit. So you're up in Grand Rapids? Uh, I'm out of Grand Rapids. I'm like 30 minutes away from Grand Rapids. He's a, he's out of Grand Rapids also. He's, mm-hmm. but it takes me like 45 minutes to get to him. So um, you're up there with Jeff too, Vandermeer. Yeah, Jeff Vandermeer and um, uh, Court. I'm with him too. Schwartz is like two hours away from me. Schwartz. Uh, Which yeah. one? Uh, Ryan Schwartz. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, Jeremy's is. Um, one of my favorites, if not my favorite maker. Yeah, uh, he's my favorite maker. Just his style. Um, mm-hmm. but he also scares the living shit out of me. Wow, he's such a nice guy. I spent what well, Kentucky twenty eighteen. I was we were sharing tables next to each other, and like I spoke to him and his wife the entire time. He's no, the only no. maker I like. I still feel nervous about like approaching. Yes, that that too. Um, I met him my first blade show also. And uh, I talked to him, but um, we're cool now. But he has, he's to me, he has that rock star aura to him, you know, just kind of. There's a slight intimidation involved because the designs, that's all. Yeah. And I, for me, it's just like uh, starstruck because he's just so good, you know. his execution on everything is like perfect. And it's something I want to get to. And I know it's going to take time and, and, and stuff like that, but he's just, he, yeah, he probably is my favorite maker. I can't think of somebody else that tops his stuff. I felt that way kind of with Ken Onion when I first started talking to him, but after five minutes of talking with him, I was like, there's just some like hillbilly. that's just like doing shit. I mean, it's just, you know, See the thing with me and, and Marsh that we kind of click is 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 guns. He likes guns, and um, he has this nineteen eleven that he hasn't made yet. Just sit on his bench. And I was like, dude. So as soon as this coronavirus crap goes over, um, I'll go up there and help him build it because I've built like four. I'm gonna build another one here. And do you do you do any professional shooting? Do you do like three gun or anything like that? <laughs> No, I just not enough time, dude. I don't. I I, I enjoy shooting a lot. Um, I I do want to do shooting competition, but um, it's just not enough time in the day for that. People don't get it. We don't, we don't get into life making because we're going to make a ton of money. Money and have a lot of free no. time. It's like no. I tell my friends all the time, what nine to fives. I'm like, I probably make less money than you, and I still work a hundred hours a week. Yeah. It's the only benefit I get to work for myself, and I get to make something cool with my hands. Yeah, exactly. It, it, yeah, we don't we don't make a ton of money off of the the knives, really. No, no hell no. We get to make our own, we get to make our own schedule. He, he, in my case, I get to do whatever the hell I want. Fernando has gets more family time if he needs it. Yep. Yep. Just classical artisans, you know, just constantly complaining about the money, but making cool shit. I love it. It's good. Yeah, right. <laughs> I'm just fucking around. No, like, it's, it's what's it. your what's what's your favorite material to work with like synthetic or, or natural materials i haven't done much of the wood stuff um but i love wood i i've been uh really watching on youtube those wood turning things you know where the, oh, yeah. the then they make oh, the, yeah. the bowls i just find it fascinating man it's like it's a piece of wood you know but I then want to turn something out of wood lathe yeah, me too. And and you look at it and you see the wood and it has all this different just winding lines and just you, you look at it and you're like, man, nature made that. It's like freaking beautiful, you know? It's just it amazes me. And the different colors and shades is just it's super cool. So I, I find wood very appealing, very awesome. I know it's not the best on a knife, on a folder. Um so after wood, I think my favorite would be Micarta. I love Micarta. Um, I hate carbo quartz. That's the devil. I hate that shit. Um, carbo quartz. Yeah, carbo quartz is just dog shit. Dog shit. I hate I remember, it. I remember 
just throw it down. Like it's just so expensive. I'm like, you just get you either actual almost the same thing. I finally introduced myself to the guy at um the the uh fucking TKI. Yeah. Nashville. Yeah. What's his name? Uh I don't know. Jim something. Yeah, but the you know, the cover quartz guy that he's like he can only sell it or some shit or Yeah. He, he bought the right just to sell it within the US. Yeah, which is uh pretty cool. I mean Richard Mill makes their watches out of that shit, so Yeah. I mean it it it's just uh I hate working with it. I don't know anything about it. it the, is that dust going to fucking give me cancer in three years? You know? Here's the thing with that. I don't think that was ever invented to be worked by hand. That's what I mean. So to working with yeah, it, it's not. fucking scary. Yeah, because those Richard Mill watches, those are all CNC, 100%. Like, there's no hand yeah. touching those except for, like, fitting and shit. Yeah. I don't, I don't know that people create new materials thinking about how it's going to be made or manufactured. They're just worried mm-hmm. about how it looks and the outcome. They're not like, oh, I wonder how this is going to grind or how this is going to mill. They're just like, dude, this is going to look fucking badass. Well, like, that's like, it. Like, 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 oh, you watch it and have these women like lick the uh, the paintbrushes. Yeah, pretty, it's yeah, all pretty much. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So like if I call Westinghouse, I'm like, look, like, can I get a spec sheet for this material? They'll give it to me and they'll have tests for it. Uh, there's no tests uh-huh. or spec sheets for marble quartz. Yeah, so it's just you a don't bespoke know ass what, material. You don't know what's going on in there, dude. I mean, you, you, you grind. I have a small shop, right? And I, <clears throat> I wear my gas mask or my fa- filter, whatever you want to call it, the fucking thing you put over your face sure. and you breathe clean air. You know, you put that on and you're grinding away, but it's on your skin. It makes me itch like crazy. Um, uh, carbon fiber does that normally. Yeah, um, carbon fiber is. I hate that shit too. I love how it looks and yeah, it works it's easy. My, it's my favorite material, but I hate working with it. Yeah, I it, after Micarta, it, carbon fiber is awesome. Um, but carbo cord scares me because I don't know what the hell it is. But carbon fiber is just as bad. You know. Yeah, the, it's, it's probably it's probably even worse. You don't worse. get like carbon fiber. It's not meant to be bought in sheets and sanded and shaped. Like there's a reason that they usually mold it to shape, and that's the finished product. Like what we knife makers do when people are oh, okay, I get carbon fiber. It's like oh, why is like a titanium frame lock and a carbon fiber frame lock the same price? I'm like carbon fiber should cost fucking more. Like yeah, I'm risking my health here. I have to wear gear. I have to usually I wear different clothes for it. When yep. I walk into my house, clothes go right into a bag. I and right. I start itching. You, yep. your hands are stained for about three days, no matter how many times you wash them. Yep. Well, like, there's like people don't get that. I'm like, no, that shit sucks. Like uh, Jeremiah knows. I just had to cut a bunch of carbon fiber, and like my machine, my my CNC was disgusting, and it took yeah. me about ten hours to clean it. I don't know. I I have a bunch of like actual Ivorite Westinghouse, and I barely ever use it because I'm like, I don't. I like these people aren't going to pay me enough money to work with something that was made in the '50s when like everything had lead and asbestos in it. Yeah, that's the fun nice. stuff. Nice, right? but nobody thinks about. That. No, like I have a bunch of shrew Westing caps, and like I'm like, oh, I'm gonna use it, and it's like ah, no one's gonna pay. Like I know people are paying a premium for it because the true stuff doesn't exist, and then there's people who are lying, like oh, it's Westinghouse, but it's like I could tell, I'm like that's not the real Westinghouse nonsense. They're just okay. Yeah, dude. I made a, I made a knife, I made a a knife, a, a Hellcat, and the guy sent me the Westinghouse, and he said, yeah, it's real Westinghouse. I said, uh, no, it's not. He goes, yeah, the made guy that I, when we say Westinghouse, goes, we're not referring. Just made by Westinghouse. Yeah, he goes. So the guy said it was Westinghouse. It's the, the antique Westinghouse. Says no, it's not. Just, it, I can tell how how it worked and how it it finished was not the same. Um, you've, so, used, but, you've used a bunch, bunch of the original stuff. Yeah, I did. Are you a uh, a mattress guy? You like materials more or design more? That's a good question. I don't know if I ever thought about it. Uh, uh, usually makers tend to like appreciate and have more fun with the process of like deciding what materials to choose. Seems like, yeah, yeah, because definitely if somebody says, Oh, I want to work with carbon cords, I'm like, Oh, fuck, damn it, why couldn't it just be Micarta? If it's Micarta, I'm all happy, I'm good. Yeah, I'm just learning the power of the word no. 
Yeah. Yeah. I'm, I'm totally okay telling the, my guy, like, yeah, I need a sale, but like, I'm totally okay telling I'm like, look, I might not, like, if I try to convince someone, like, I don't, I'm like, I don't want to do that. And I want to do this. And like, they're really pushing it. I, I, I'm totally fine saying, I, I literally just have the email, I'm like, look, I'm probably not the knife maker for you. Yeah. And I try to it took appease me, everybody. It took me a while to be, to, to, do that be comfortable with saying just no but i'm like no like i'm the artist i get to decide how i want my work to look yeah um i've i've started to get that way um i try my best to to you know say you know you want this let's go with this instead where it kind of looks the same but you're not spending a buttload on material yeah like i wouldn't like art's not a democracy i'm not gonna let somebody else don't let someone else tell you what to you know how to make your shit right that too you know or you know oh make the hellcat but i want this like this and this and just like no no that's not how it works <laughs> like if you want that then you buy it <laughs> yeah this is not a hellcat well that's anymore. that's a good that's a good segue so um fernando what where do you stand uh vis-a-vis custom orders or do you make on speculation how, how do you sort of how have you worked at uh developing over the years uh no i just i've never made a custom knife that the customer des- designed um just because like they design it and then you make it and it doesn't look like what they wanted it's just i feel like it's more of a headache you know because they because most of the time people cannot see or visualize what they have in their head you know, you know what I mean? Like, they'll say, oh, I want this and I want this. Well, I'll usually guide them. Like, they'll tell me they want these materials. I'm like, look, like, I don't think that might look right. Let's anodize this color, this color, and it'll look great. Like, someone wanted recently, like, Tamascus accents, so collars, clip, and spacer. And then they wanted it to be, like, green and uh, right. blue anodizing. And I'm like, look, let's go with blue and bronze anodized frames. And it came out killer. And he's like, yeah, you were right. And, like, just the build that he had, I was like, this might look like... I don't right. know, like, it's my, like, right. And I, I have a, I, I can probably when I start a project, I can usually see how it's gonna finish, you know, before I get into it. So it's like I can visualize it and see, you know, how it's gonna end up. <clears throat> the only variation is is the the grind because it's always something different, you know. But most of the time, I can see exactly how the materials are gonna be, or you know how. The, how it's going to turn out. And whereas the customer sometimes, uh, most of the time they don't know how it's going to turn out with what they have in mind. You know, like how Nick said, yeah, I want this weird color with this weird color. And then I want these accents. Like what? Like, I feel like a lot of those are like heavily influenced by their surroundings. Like, I feel like, unless they're a highly seasoned collector with like years of custom yeah, knife exactly. collection, yep. they're really just kind of seeing what their friends have. And they're like, shit, I like this guy's knives. I want something like that. You know, and I'm not, it's not a blame. It's not a blame game on that one. It's totally reasonable. Like you're getting into it. You get really excited about it. And you're like, man, right. I'd love a red Ferrari. Yeah. And then six months later, you're like, dude, red Ferraris are garbage. Like I can't drive this shit anywhere. Exactly. And, and then you kind of like you, you fall into what you like. Right. For, and, and, you know, the only car that should be yellow. You, uh, garbage fire. Italian yeah, cars are garbage fire. fires. How can you say that? Like, uh, okay, pretty, again, uh, you're, this is a tangent. It was a, it was just a. It was not. We're not getting into that conversation. Anyway. Okay, garbage fire. Anyway, That's what, but like, yeah, collectors sometimes they get overwhelmed. <laughs> I can hear God. the comments already. He said, "Fucking Italian cars are garbage fires." Well, I'm pretty sure garbage no one has ever you know set foot in an Italian car. So just yeah. gonna put that out there. No, but, but like for now, it's all about visualizing. Because like for example, like I've been trying to teach my like my dad is like, oh, I want you to build this, and I'm like, that's gonna look like a hot garbage fire. Uh, so I designed that imp that's like a two inch frame lock for my dad to make makers choices. I'm like, look, here here we're working on batches of ten. Write down a list and tell me how you want to finish each one of these. And usually I'll approve like seven out of ten. And I'm like, that's gonna look like garbage. And I'm like, I want him to come up with the the build so that way when he finishes it, he could start visualizing it. 
Yeah. And like come up with some things recently now, like I didn't think of. I'm like, oh, it looked pretty cool. Now they're starting to get it. He's he's done about like 60 of those builds where he came up with the idea for it. And then we right. did it. That's cool. And now he started to visualize stuff more. But back in before, he was like, oh, let's go with this, this, and that. And I'm like, uh, I'm like, I don't really like gold anodizing. It kind of looks weird. I hate it. Ugh. Yeah, he, he was yeah, really, yeah. he was Russian Jews. So he was like really into like, oh, let's, an- let's anodize all these wow. titanium screws, gold. And I'm like, yeah, it's it's gold. Yeah. bad and bougie. Like, let's make everything gold, gold Ooh, and black. I'm like, bad and bougie. Everything gold. Oh, geez. I think I did My that. My friend is jeweler. I, I think I did that for a customer. He was like, yeah, I want this. It was some absurd colors. And I'm like, really? And he's like, yeah, I think it'll look badass. I'm like, okay. And it, I think it was just anodizing. It was a basic uh, Hellcat. He wanted it one color, then stonewashed one color, and then stonewashed again for a different color. And I'm like, this is going to look like complete garbage. So I, <clears throat> I was like, oh, jeez. I told him, and he's like, no, 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 it'll look good, I promise. So I did it, and I I took a picture, and I sent it to him. I said, I'm not, this is not leaving my shop. This looks like complete ass. And he sees the picture, he's like, oh, you're right. What do you think would look good? I'm like, oh, jeez. I've done that once where a customer is adamant. Because like I told you, like if I don't think the build's going to look, I only work on mainly, like 80% of what leaves my shop is all custom orders. Yeah. So I'll usually if I read through it, I'm like, I don't this might not look good. And I'll follow up with the guy. And like there was this one guy who was like really adamant about the build. And I was like, you know what? Whatever. I'll build it because it's customers gets final say. Just I usually I was like trying to like massage his idea to where I'm like, this might look a little better. And it'll be pretty close to what you want. So yeah. I built it for the guy and I sent him a photo. And like I could just tell he's like, usually it's like, wow, it looks amazing. Like I could kind of tell he's like, oh, it's not that nice. And because I, I made it, I was like, oh, that's not that nice. Yeah, it looks like. <laughs> He's like, can you redo it? And I'm like, look, man, like I, I, I finished it. I've sharpened it's ready. Like I could redo whatever you want, but I'm going to have to charge you for like refinishing grades because I told you it's not going to look good. And I did it and I put the work into it. Right. And like, so I ended up charging him and re- make, refinishing everything. Like I was like, I'm like at a point, like I was like, I could just do it. But I'm like, no, nah, I have to charge him because like I was really trying to talk him out of it. And I was like, no, nah, I have to charge him. He paid him. I read I read the knife. And I, and I hate saying I told you so, but then, like, sometimes you get customers and you're just like, yeah, I fucking told you. It's like, listen. I don't have to tell I told you so. I'm like, I'm like here's the bill. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. Well, which you already had the time doing. invested. It's not unreasonable. Yeah, which I hated doing. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm not trying to scout no. the guy, but, like, I really told you I didn't, like, I'm building it to order. So I'm like, no. Like, if I told you no, it's like, because you want a certain, like, anodizing, I'm not going to tell you no. It's like, if you want those colors, cool. It's a color. But like, if you wanted a specific material like layout or something like that, or like a specific like resanding, maybe then I'll say no. But uh, like for anodizing, and cool. It's like not that hard to refinish. I'll do whatever you want, but I'll try to talk you out of it if I don't think it's gonna look right. Because some yeah. guys do colors. I'm, I'm more of a grayscale guy, so like maybe they like gold and blue and green on the same knife. But like if I could just know it's gonna look like baby barf, like it's like no. Yeah, or or I get something where I know I'm not gonna be good at like. <clears throat> like Brian Efros or even Matt Christensen, they do the um that dark rub with the acid wash blade and then they do a hand rub on it. Mm-hmm. I do something I, similar. Yeah, dark rub looks nice. I can't do it. I can't do it the way they do it too, where they just kind of do one or two strokes and it's mainly still acid wash. That doesn't work for me either. I do a full rub out to where it turns gray and like it's fully like if you look at it, I, I call it ash rub because it's more like if you took like some ash, put it on a knife and rub that. Yeah. So See, I tried the way they did it, but I could never make it look right because it never goes into the plunge correctly, and just I'm not a fan of how I, I just do don't it. like. I it. just I I just don't do it. I, one thing I'm like, okay, for me, Matt and Brian do it the best. I haven't seen very many other people do it. So they asked me if I could do it. Maybe I could figure it out. I'm pretty sure I could figure it out. But I'm like. In my head, it won't look as good as Matt's or Brian's, so I won't do it. I, I don't know. If, you know, the, this is some finishes where I see other makers do it, and they're it's so good. Where if I try to do it, I know it's not going to be as good, so I, I refuse to do it. No, like I've tried, I've tried it with like the way that I, I called up Matt. I was like, "Yo, how are you doing? Are you just?" Taking a scotch spray pad and lightly rubbing that, it's pretty much exactly what I thought. I tried it and I didn't like how it looks, so then I modified it and did it my own way, and that's how I do it now. 
because I don't right. really offer hand rubs on compound ground, tantos, too many bevels, which I, nowadays I offer it, but I charge like out the ass for it to where like I really don't want to do it. And if you want it, it's going to be this much. It's hard, dude. Hand rubbing is hard and it takes hours. I don't mind hand quick- rubbing because I used to make kitchen knives. So I used to do a lot of hand rubbing on knives, but it's the compound ground tantos where it's like, well, yeah. I got to do the, be- the bevel, the tip, the swedge, and like inevitably end up scratching something. And having There's a lot that. of surfaces there. Yeah, it's too yeah. many angles, too so, many. Yeah. For a long bend. time, I used to say no. And then once I started making those sanding blocks, I, I started doing it. But then even then, I'm like, honestly, I don't want, I like on the compound ground stuff. I don't want to do it. And if you really want it, it's going to be 250 bucks. Yeah, it's, it's expensive. See, I don't, I don't even mind that. I love hand rub satin. Mm-hmm. I like hand rub satin like, over a mirror polish. Oh, I hate, I, like, not, I, just, I won't do a mirror polish. Fuck that. I won't do it. Mm. There's absolutely no reason it's, for a mirror polish. Yeah. No, none. Yeah, I don't know that a mirror polish really shows anything in particular other than the fact that I rub the steel long enough so it, like, on a molecular level, it reflects things. But That's a hand true. rub you satin, I respect that on a custom knife. Yeah, yeah. like a get. hand rub satin is nice. It, it is. But a mirror polish is too much. A mirror polish is like, wow, I'm looking at a fucking mirror. It's chrome plated. Great. Really awesome. Hand that. rub satin is like, this took a man a day of his life to do, and I yep. respect that, and I'm totally willing to pay for it. I don't mind. Like, yeah. hand rub satin is a legit custom knife finish. It is. And I, I agree. I 100%. And I have only done a few, and People said that it, my hand rub satin is good, and I'm just like, man, I do freaking. That Westy Zerg build with it, I remember on a Hellcat, I think. Yeah, yeah, that was nice. I did that one, but I, it's not as good as like Gary McGinnis or or uh, who else? Jerry or um, who else does a good hand rub finish? Uh, I would say Tashi. Yeah, and Walter Randolph does a good one too. Well, probably the best hand rub in the business is uh, Michael Raymond. I agree. Yeah, and yeah. Th- see, uh, that, and I, I've I seen tried. some great Scott Cooks with hand rub satin. Yeah, he's I, too. I like I like that that blade. I like in a hand rub satin a lot. I, I yeah, I strive to be that good, and it's, it's hard. So let's get let's get, jump back on front. So for that, what's what are you what's what are you, uh, what are you doing nowadays with the virus and what, like what are your plans for 2020 in, in the career new designs new builds what's um, so I have uh, with the virus they took me out of the gym so I'm kind of going stir crazy um, at, you know home workouts are just not as the home workout is just like trying to maintain as much as possible, but it, you're not. It, they suck. There's too many like distractions. Yeah, you're not building anything, so that's annoying. But I did have, I do have this little prototype that I made out of G10, and it's a little bastard. I think the blade is only two inch. Um, it was a fun <clears> build. So literally, what everything I'm building right now is a two inch frame lock. <laughs> But but it sucks because I have to change everything smaller. So I have to figure out all that yeah, jazz. Just, so I guess I'll be calling you, Nick, and, and seeing what your setup is. Um, because the quarter inch ain't gonna cut it. But uh, I I do have I do have a nice little cutout, and I think it looks pretty sick. So it's small and dainty. So maybe maybe I can. Make something small, you know, but we'll see. It's hard um, to get it. it. That that imp that I'm making right now, it went through f- about four or five iterations, and I thought at a certain point I was going to give up. It's I couldn't. It took me a while to get everything to fit in there using eight the, the, the like stock items like eighth inch bearings, eighth inch pivots. I had yeah. to step down to three thirty seconds of the stop pin, and then even yeah. that I had to make about four blades until I got a flipper tab that worked. On such a Correctly. small frame and not looking at like uh, the first one worked, but it just looked giant and looked out of place. And then like the, the next ones were all too small or too sharp, or you had to like your hand had to cramp up to hold it. And those designs, like people don't get it. Like those small knives are hard to design to still function in the full size hand. Yeah, and exactly. And that and this I I started in 2019. It was uh right after it was before I wanted to have it for Kentucky, but it was wasn't working correctly. So I tweaked this, tweaked that, tweaked this, and I, I think I got it. Uh, it works in G10, but 
making it in titanium and trying to get, you know, the right blade to handle ratio is hard too. You know, I there's nothing like seeing a big handle and a tiny blade, you know? Mm. Um, that's just... Of the small knives, I made a compromise. The ratio isn't as tight as my other stuff because you do need the hand, the handle to be a little longer sometimes right. to get a proper grip on it. That's what I mean. It's, getting the hand that that frame to blade ratio is hard, and it's getting it to look correct. Yeah, blade and handle and ratio hard. is that's the one of the, in my opinion, is one of the most important aspects of a folder. Exactly, and you, your stuff is like insane. You're, it's like. All blade, all just crazy, and sometimes, sometimes your blade looks way longer than the handle. And that's sometimes like, it can be exposed blade. It's all about like kind of fucking with that mixture of the uh, the front end of the of the handle. Yeah, it's crazy. All right, as you as you ride far over there, uh, the biggest issue I have with the small knives though is getting everything to stay in the handle, like exposed detents and stuff like that. That gets oh, a little bit that. to get the whole area up front in case. I, exposed detent tracks in the ball and the in the hole. I can't. I can't do it. Can't do it. No, I can't do it. I mean, may, just the track is okay. I, it, to me, still bothers me. Um, and I know some some designs you're gonna see the the track, but if I see no. that detent ball, I'm kind I'm turned off. Oof, that's it. That's it. I'm a, come on, tuck that detent track in, boys. Come yeah, on. It's nobody, just, ain't nobody want to see that. I I don't. Yeah, the most mostly all my designs work off the same mech uh, for size range. I just kind of reuse the same internals. Yeah, and they're all they're all sealed, but there's no extra space in there, so they're always riding like the edge of the handle. Yep. So for one, the, the few times I use the mascus, like you have to get in there with, like with a scope and a, na- a nail polish to really oh, be yeah. careful. Yeah, you could do a uh, a design that's using the detent ball and track as the focal point, and then design around that just like as an art piece or whatever. Do I like, what? like fuck shit up? <laughs> right. Yeah. No, that's true. Yeah. What? I huh? I just I'm not, can't. I'm not talking about functional stuff here, Nick. I'm talking about like then you start getting into like sculptural design and shit. No. I just I just can't do it, man. If I see it. It's done. Mm-hmm. Yeah, won't buy it. Right. Just no, uh, sometimes it's it's best to just it's you want it to be clean when you fire the blade. I'm sorry, I don't want to see a detent track. I don't want to see the detent for the ball. I don't want to see like this dragging thing across the Damascus. It just keep it clean. There's no reason to have that. A, a well designed knife can hide the mechanics so it operates well and cosmetically is pleasing to the eye. There's only yeah. one thing that's worse than that. And for now, those I'm talking about, it's something I haven't seen in a while. But back when we started, this was a common thing that happened with some new makers. Uh, the detent ball falling off in the choil. And you know what I'm talking about, Fernando, when there's that mid click because uh, yeah. it falls off in the choil. I'm like, yeah, no, I haven't seen them in a long time. Yeah. But back then, that was kind of like that would happen a lot to guys. I'm like, you, like you don't. It's like clicking halfway through because the lock's engaging in your toil. Yep. That's what happens when you don't know how to design knives. Yeah, mm-hmm. I, I sure. had a I had a a knife design that did that. I made the whole knife in it. I was like, oh crap! This was the my infancy of making. It's just like the MK1, the first one did that, and I was like, oh shit! Okay, I never do that again. Uh, yeah, exactly. You have to move the detent and stuff like that. My my Hellcat geometry is like for me perfect. So I, almost all my other knives have the same geometry inside. But like when I was making them, some some of them will have a different geometry, and it's like for some reason I thought you have to do something different because see people are gonna notice. But like. No, nobody notices, you know, it's like, so I just switched over everything over to the, to the same geometry and it all works in my knives. It's like, uh, yeah, I got about three geometries that I, you know, that I use for different, different size of a knife, like width and length. And I'll just kind of pop those in. That's where I start. I'll use that geometry, yeah. pivot, stop pin, lock face, detent. Well, because you know, it's, it's tested and it works good. It's tested. It works good. But I also design them in a way to where you, they, they physically can't have lock rock. Yeah. Like they, they just you can't. Yeah, there's not enough lock surface to where you could have you can make it have lock rock. It'll never wear in to have lock rock. It's really hard to fuck up. 
What's your next show? Where where are we going to see you next? The the only show that I know for certain that I'm doing is, is Kentucky. Um, I want to do another one, but it's going to be a smaller show. I won't do a huge show. I just I like bringing my family with me, and um, I just like how personal it is. I can actually spend more than two minutes talking to whoever's giving me a thousand dollars for a knife. You know, <clears throat> people like buying things from friends or somebody they feel comfortable with. You know, I don't I'm not going to feel comfortable giving some Joe Smo a thousand dollars and just, you know, it feels better when you're like, oh, you know, we know each other. Here's a thousand bucks. Give me the knife. You know, you're supporting someone, you know, it's just a, that's what the whole thing is. knife. When there's a large purchase involved, but you can chill with the maker, it's very personable. Like you feel a connection to the thing that you're buying. Yes, exactly. You know, just have a beer together. We'll shoot the shit and and have a good time. You know, and that's to me the best part. Yeah, I mean, in a way included in the price. Right. You know, I mean... I, I mean, I'm gonna hang out with you regardless if you gave me a thousand bucks. You know, if you if you like my shit, and 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 we vibe, I'll hang out with you. You know. So um, so where can people find you? Um, so I have I've taken a Instagram hiatus. I just it's just becoming too much, man. Um, just twenty three thousand followers, my man. You got to keep them entertained. Yeah, I guess I guess I should jump back on there. Uh, but most most of it's just on Facebook. I'm I'm on there. Um, lately, I haven't been too active. Uh, just I've had a lot of shit going on. Um, a lot of shit. And most of the time of the coronavirus. Where can people find? What, what's your Facebook group called? Oh, uh, Medina Custom Knives. Um, just a group. I have a page, but the page is just junky. No one. No one uses no. their page. It's just it's mandatory yep. by the rules. <clears throat> so it's just the group Medina Custom Knives. I don't know how many people are in there. Um, so you can find him Medina Custom Knives on Facebook. His Instagram is also, I believe, Medina correct. Custom Knives. Yep. And then um, you know, I've been thinking about doing. Then what's the best way to contact you? Uh, just email. Email is probably the best. So are you now? Are you currently so, taking custom orders? No. No, okay. not at the moment. I'm trying. I'm just trying to catch up because I've, I'm I'm behind. Everybody's behind, you know. Um, so I'm not taking any orders. I'm just gonna getting the ball rolling, getting everything going, and I'll make maybe make a, a like a lotto or something every. I try to every month, but um, I've been mainly just focusing on the on the custom orders. I have so many. It's weird, Nick. I don't mean to to start over, but uh, do you ever get this, Nick, where you you make a, like a knife and you never see that knife again? Yeah, about the, the, for the, all the knives that I made. Like out of all the knives I made, in my first three years, I've only seen two pop up. Like where'd they go? Just, I know I've made some badass ones, and I'd never see them. Some of these collectors, man, they just they, they go into collections that they're a lot of these old guys collect, but they don't really do the, the social medias and those some of the shows. Uh, they just they just go away to safes. Some guys buy a knife and then um, they'll play with it for like two three days. They'll get something new and it goes in their safe to never come out again. Yeah, it's crazy. <laughs> I wish I, I could see them because, like, you know, post them up on Facebook. Let me see it again, you know? Yeah, I try but, to take photos of every knife I make. Usually I don't post all those photos. I take them. I same. take photos of all the knives. And I'm like, I'll post it. I yep. don't. And I'm like, oh, I'll post this on Throwback Thursday. And I don't. Like, I have not On my Instagram, if there's not many knives on there, I probably show about every 10th or 15th knife I made, maybe. Yeah. Agree, which yep. is always a dead so, giveaway because when a maker does that, that's the knife they're actually happy with. <laughs> like, no, I mean, it's like if, if they look too similar to something else, then I'm like, ah, there's no point to post this. Yeah, because most of the time it's like a basic one that you've already done ten times over. It's just like no point of showing it. Spicy. So it's just like, uh, yeah, yeah. 
Yep. All right. So so Facebook mainly. Hit you up on Facebook. See what's cracking. Yep. Join the yep. join the email. Facebook page. Email. What's the email? Yep. Uh, the Lionhearted eighty six at gmail dot com. Nice. Okay. So pester him there. He's not going to respond. Don't worry about it. It's not personal. He's a busy man. He's got a lot of shit going on. Uh, okay, good. But Facebook, I like it. Um, Fernando, I uh, I want to say it's been it's been a blast to have you on. Uh, I appreciate you taking time and uh, and coming on here and talking with us. And oh, thank um, you for having. Me. Yeah, really dude. appreciate it. It's uh, it's it's always a pleasure to have somebody on here, you know, who's who's excited um, to really get down to the nitty gritty uh, about what they do every day, you know, because that's that's important. That's that's what we all do in our day to day. So, you know, it's funny because I don't normally, to, you know, get to talk about it. It's just what can you make me, you know, well, see, that's that's what this is here for. Yeah. Yeah. It's good times. I'll do it again. Let's do a part two. All right. Sure. So, far we will. Uh, so on that note, I'll, so it's Nick Chuprin, um of NCC Knives. You could find me on NCC Knives on Instagram or my site, nccknives.com. You get in contact with me at nccknives at yahoo.com. And on, that, on that note, NC, Nick Chuprin signing out. This has been Hamish Malays, a.k.a. Elijah Isham. Back at you for the return episode of Bladeology. I'm out. Everybody, I really appreciate you listening. This is a uh, this has been another great episode of Bladeology. This is Jeremiah Burbank from PVK Vegas. Again, thanks for listening and I'm out. Fernando, it's your turn. Oh. <laughs> thanks for having me, guys. Um it's Fernando Medina with Medina Custom Knives. <laughs> Uh, find me on my Facebook group, Medina Custom Knives, and uh, you can email me at thelionhearted86 at gmail.com. And thanks for having me, guys.